Oh my god. I don't know. Golly. This is impossible. Okay, that's not gonna work. And just like this, we're back with another one. You find yourself back in my humble abode, mi casa, su casa. We have another video uh, teed up for you fine barbecue fanatics. The contents of this video are all things firebox related. We uh, successfully built a semi-insulated firebox made out of a 250 gallon propane tank and it almost led me to do harmful things to the folks around me and I was very angry at this process uh, I hope I can say that on YouTube. However, that's the reality. This process drove me insane and lucky for you, we documented the entire thing. Now, I don't know why or what led you to click this video. Could have been the thumbnail, could have been the title, could have been the fact that you love barbecue and you wanna see the process. I don't know, however, you're here. And uh, while you're here, let me explain what you're gonna get out of this video. I Disclaimer, and I've said this through all my other videos, I am not a professional and actually I'm probably the complete opposite of a professional. And so part of what you'll get in this video is you'll get to watch uh, me make all kinds of mistakes. And if you're building one of these bad boys, then uh, you'll be able to mitigate and circumvent some of these mistakes that I made. If you're a professional, you'll get to laugh at me while I make all the mistakes. And um, if you're just simply here, like I always say, for some fun barbecue content, to hang around. I know you'll love it. So with that said, I'm jumping right into the video. All things Firebox, you get to watch us fabricate a nice, beautiful, semi-insulated 250 gallon uh, Firebox. Thank you. Kicking it off with the first step of this entire process. And uh, that's splitting my Firebox in half. Firebox was built out of a beautiful 250 gallon propane tank. It's pretty simple. I just drew a circle around the midway point, took the cutoff wheel to it, and a cut. Super stoked that it's finally complete, as you can see. Uh oh, missed a spot. There we go. Popped it open. I couldn't have been more excited in that very moment. All right, we're progressing through the first early stages. We're doing all the preliminary stuff, so stick with us, preliminary stuff. So this is the inner liner of my um, firebox. This is what makes it semi-insulated. It's a three quarter inch thick steel round tube. It's 24 inches in diameter. I don't even remember how I found this thing. It was a, uh, it was very difficult to find. It came with this green film, as you can see, and, and the green film has to go. I, I, I don't know what it is, if it's some kind of protectant, I don't know, but we, it had to go. So my best guess was, well, let's just light a massive fire in it and see if it burns off. And it does, and it smells like death. So be careful. But yeah, guys, I lit a super hot fire in there. We let it roll for probably 30, 45 minutes, and uh, it just started to burn itself away. It was, it was actually really easy and uh, scraped off some little remaining pieces, but it's pretty easy to get off. All right, last action item here, and then we're getting into the, the nitty gritty. I'm cutting the inside part of the firebox, the liner. I'm cutting it down to size. So I just measured my uh, the outside shell of the firebox. I just figured out how long I wanted it, completely made that measurement up, how long I wanted my firebox. And now I'm just cutting a few inches off the, the edge to make sure they fit flush with each other. There, there's really no science here, no rhyme or reason. I just uh, decided how long I wanted my firebox and made sure that all components, the inner liner and the outer shell were the same length. All right, folks, let's jump into the meat and potatoes of this video. Pretty excited. Let me explain what you're gonna see. I just wanna help paint the picture so it makes more sense, okay? So we have the 24 inch round pipe. We'll call that the liner. Then we have the 250 gallon tank cut in half. We'll call that 
the firebox shell or the shell. Somehow I have to put the shell on top of the liner because I want it to be semi insulated, meaning there's an air gap between the shell and the liner. Now, once the shell is put on top of the liner, I have to somehow cut an opening, uh, a throat opening, if you will, so that the heat and the smoke can be transferred from the firebox to the cook chamber. So what you're about to see is me um, setting the dimensions for the throat opening. And basically what I did was I took a cardboard cutout, I drew a 24 inch round circle, and I'm gonna place it on top of the shell I'll draw that circle and what I hope is to essentially transpose that circle onto the shell so I can visually see if I had x-ray vision the circle would be perfectly on top of the actual liner if that makes any sense we'll jump to the video you'll see I'll narrate it but that's what is going down here so I explained earlier I drew a 24 inch circle on a cardboard cutout um, pretty easy booty check for the wife and we have the 24 inch screw that pencil. We have the 24 inch <laughs> circle. Little meme action. <laughs> Is it called a meme? My. My. <laughs> Mime action, brutal. So we have the 24 inch circle drawn on the uh, cardboard. I actually did this process already. I just, uh, I, was, I was gonna show you Cutting it out, I decided I'll just jump to the, the real one. You get the idea. And now uh, we're placing, or I'm placing the cutout on top of the shell. Remember, we have to put this shell on top. You can see it in the back, there's the pipe. We have to retrofit the shell on top of the pipe. And uh, I want it to be semi-insulated. My hope at the time, what I was hoping happened, which it kind of did, was if I can just evenly distribute this 24 inch circle. My hope was if, if I were to cut out the 24 inch circle on the shell, which I don't cut the whole thing out, but in my head I figured if I, if I were to remove this circle, the inner liner should be perfectly flush with that circle. And then what'll happen is we'll, we'll weld it together, obviously, right, to make it fit. We'll weld it together, but it has to be close enough. It has to be flush enough with the inside part of the shell for the whole thing to work, so. That's what we hope for. We cross our fingers and uh, stick around and we'll see if it worked or not. I don't know if you can see, we drew a line. Well, this line right here is directly center of the firebox throat opening. And I came up an inch because I want my firebox throat opening to be just a little shorter. Then once we set that middle line, I just cut off these edges. And what I'll do is I'll cut these edges out and then bring that cut all the way up. And I did the same thing over here, cut that corner out. And so it'll be kind of like a football shape. You'll see as I cut. Friends, this is where all hell broke loose. <laughs> all right, what we're trying to do is measure and mark exactly where our firebox is going to enter the, uh, the smoke chamber or the cook chamber, if you will. And it was really difficult. We, we obviously don't have a massive shop. We don't have all the heavy machinery. So what we did is we just took a cherry picker or an engine hoist and uh, we rigged up some chains and now we're just trying to level it out top to bottom, left to right, to try to get it as center as humanly possible so we can cut this open and weld them together. Very difficult. And what we decided to do is just take a straight piece of metal and run it along the side of the curvature of the firebox shell. 
and we just made uh, marks with a sharpie as you can see and that's where I went wrong if you can see that I just went way way too wide what I should have done is made um, probably more of a circle and less of a football oval thing but you know you live and you learn and there's that uh that center line that I was referencing the blue line on top of it is perfectly center and so if you can see I went like half an inch down right on that silver line and I that's where we're going to insert the firebox um, I felt good at the time so I just started cutting and again you live and you learn what you probably should do or want to do is not come out as wide and uh, and not bring the lines the sidelines down so steep we're getting this uh, we're getting the firebox liner in the shell and we're dealing with some super heavy metal but it's got to get done we got to stand it upright vertical so that we can we can tack weld it all together it was uh like i said it was heavy so mike had the genius idea to strap it all together and ratchet it and it pulled it in increments um each little ratchet pulled the liner closer and closer and we ended up getting it uh, fit up perfectly there's the old engine hoist shout out to my friend derek Derek, thank you for that. It was a lifesaver. And uh, yeah, guys, now we're now we're trying to get the liner to fit as perfectly flush as humanly possible. Because as you can see, we're turning her vertical. This is fun. Aren't you guys having fun? I love uh, I love barbecue. I love the process of building a smoker, and I'm really loving uh, showing this to you guys. So I hope this is helpful. We uh, we're using every tool in the toolbox that we have to get this thing vertical, because it's a must, right? Remember, we have to make sure that the liner is the same length as the shell. We have to make sure that the liner fits perfectly flush inside the firebox shell. I'm going for a perfectly semi-insulated firebox, and so uh, Mike and I really wanted to be on our P's and Q's uh, with this process. And as you can see, we ran into a little hiccup. If you look at that bottom right corner, it's a, it's a little bit tilted which means we have to move that outer shell around and try to fit it up so it's all flush and even. It's a heck of a process, but we got it done. You can see that it's fitting, it's fitting a lot better now and uh, it's looking more flush. If you look really close where Mike's left hand is, that liner is fitting seamlessly on the inside of that football cutout, that throat opening. Better shot here. That uh, that worked out flawlessly. You can see the liner is uh, is fit flush with our firebox shell, and then all Mike is gonna do is just weld all that together. I have to give a major, major, super shout out to Mike. This guy is a first off, he's a professional welder by trade, and he was welding all day for like 12, 13, 14 hours a day. And then came over to the house after a massive days of days of work, and then helped us weld this smoker. So, Mike, I appreciate you, man. We uh, we got this puppy rocking and rolling. So now he tacked in the inner liner to the outside shell. We feel comfortable that it's safe, secure, sturdy, and so uh, now we're just hooking up the firebox because we got to get it moved. We got to get it over to the cook chamber. What a process that was, my friends. <laughs> If you didn't catch that, the gang played an insidious joke on me. 
Mike told me that there was a massive major error with our firebox once we spent four hours in blood, sweat, and tears getting it right. He played a joke and told me that we messed it up. So I came around the corner thinking that it was DEF CON 5, but there was no problem. Mike's tacking it in. We're tacking it in. We're happy with what we saw, and uh, we are laying the initial tacks to merge our firebox with our cook chamber. Now, friends, look in that left corner, in the right corner. There are massive gaps that should not be there. That, that was the critical error that I made earlier in the video when I was cutting the throat opening. And, uh, Again, man, I'm, le I'm letting out all the good info. This is nowhere to be found on YouTube. If it was, I wouldn't have made this error. So uh, heed my warning. Be very cautious when you're making your throat opening. However, there's light at the end of the tunnel because, uh, because I love you, friends and family. I'll show you how I fixed it. So keep watching. I did fix it, and it actually was not a problem whatsoever. But check this out. Look in that, look in that bottom right corner. That's a massive gap that I that I created when I cut that throat opening and that is just wildly unacceptable. So uh, like I said, keep watching the video. We, uh, we put three brains together. My wife's brain is actually like two and a half. She's a genius. So we put like five or six brains together to fix the one problem and uh, we got it fixed. Here's how we filled it, check this out. I took a piece of cardboard, love that cardboard, and I traced out the gap. I literally, I pressed the cardboard flush on the gap. We crawled on the inside and we traced out the exact um, dimensions of that gap. And then what I did was I took the cardboard, I cut that out with a box cutter, and then I transposed the cardboard onto a piece of steel. This is actually the same steel from the throat opening cutout. So I took the edge so it matched the curvature, and I traced that cutout, and now I'm physically cutting it out. From here, once those pieces were cut out, I did have to do some finagling with the tiger paw and grind it down to make it a better fit, but essentially all we did was take those cutouts, look in that bottom left corner, I just put it right on the outside, it fit flush, and then Mike welded them in to close that gap, and it ended up working perfectly. By no means do I want to make it sound like it was an easy process. There was some finagling, but it ended up working out. And Mike also had to go on the inside and do some welding as well. And there's still a gap. You can see there's still a gap, but it was the same process. I just took cardboard, traced whatever gap there was, went to our extra steel, traced it on the steel, cut it out, grinded it down to make it fit as flush as possible. So what's the moral of the story, um, comrades? Save all of your extra steel, even if you don't think you need it, save it. If I would have thrown away that, uh, that cutout, that throat opening cutout, I would have not been able to salvage the firebox in the way that we did. This is a close-up from the inside of the cook chamber at our piecework, right in the bottom. At this point, we have all of the errors corrected. We have all the tacks set in place. We've said all of our prayers. We felt good about where the firebox was sitting. We felt good about um, its position as far as the level is concerned, left, right, north, south. We felt good about it all. So as you are seeing, Mike is officially laying in our final, our final welds. We're making it official. There's really no going back from here. Um, I can't express to you guys how happy I was when we finally got it all figured out and it worked out for the better. 
I don't know really how or why. Maybe I came away with some wisdom, some learning lessons to help you, you find folks, but it worked out perfectly. All I'm doing here is taking the tiger paw and where the firebox was inserted into the cook chamber, there was, there's layers of paint, obviously. And I don't want that paint to be anywhere near food. I don't want it to be inside of the cook chamber. I don't want it there at all. So I took a tiger paw, multiple tiger paws actually, and I just buffed out all, I removed all that paint. I stripped it all the way down to the steel. And, uh, and I'm really happy I did that. For all my barbecue fishing I was out there, nothing worse than making people sick from barbecue, and this is a sure way to make people sick. Ah, <sighs> okay. Everyone, let's take a deep breath together because that was arguably one of the most stressful processes of my entire life. And watching it over, um, it raised my blood pressure almost to where it was the first time. So, <sighs> what you're about to witness is uh, one of the greatest moments of my life, the maiden voyage. The first official fire burned in my 500 gallon offset smoker. I could not be happier. I, uh, I truly, truly from the bottom of my heart hope this video helped you guys. This was a heck of a process that required multiple brains to get it done. Again, I say it all the time, I'm not a professional and you've obviously seen that <laughs> through my videos. However, I hope they bring um, some kind of value to your life and uh, enough of the talk. Let's just watch, let's just watch a beautiful moment. Love y'all. Meet and greet. Over and out.